Okay, so whenever you're working near the edge of a cliff, like I am right here, you want to make sure you clip yourself in to, I mean, that's just number one. Eh? Even though, you, you know, you might be quite secure and um, feel quite comfortable at heights and that, if it's possible, uh, clip yourself in because you always expect the unexpected. So I might just carry a double length sling. And you know, and I might not get carried away with having locking carabiners everywhere. This is just a backup and I feel quite secure, but maybe take one of my anchor pieces, put myself in so that when I'm working here, um, if anything happens or a rock falls or I slip or somebody, you know, a scorpion scares me, then uh, I might still be around. Okay, in this case, I'm just using a couple of bolts and I'm running the uh, anchor sling through the bolts. Then I'm going to join them with a fisherman's knot. So here's my fisherman's knot. Now I'm building an anchor to repel off of, okay? So if I'm repelling, I'm leaving the sling behind. And so I'll use a fisherman's because, well, because I like a nice secure knot and I don't care if it gets really, really tight. Somebody will come along later and steal it from me anyhow. So here it goes. Fisherman's knot right there. Then I take the fisherman's knot, figure out my direction of load, in this case my load is straight down, and now I build a focal point and I try and equalize between my two pieces. So if you don't know what an equalized anchor is, go back and look at some of the other videos, you're getting ahead of yourself here, alright? And I'm just going to do an overhand because it's getting kind of tight, there we go. Now, I'm well equalized between the two pieces and I'm on two strands of rope there. I'm feeling pretty good about this anchor. My next step now is to divide the rope in half. Because I'm going to use a single rope and then I'm going to rappel over the edge of this cliff. So, first thing to do is find the ends of both ropes, which I have right here. Okay, now this is a single rope, but they're slightly different colors. It's called a duodes rope. But this rope is really old, and I haven't had it out since I can't even remember the last time I took this out. So I'm not sure what the lengths of this rope are. So I'm going to be really careful about measuring the rope so that I'm in the center of the rope when I come to the end, once I've thrown all the uh, extra rope over the end. And when I come to that, I'm at the center, and then both ends at that are hanging over the cliff are going to be equal. Okay, and I'll show you how I do that right now. Is I just take one of the ropes, in this case this one here, I run it through, and now I have both ends here. Now before I get carried away, what I like to do is I put a knot in one rope and a knot in the other. And these are about a meter or so from away from the ends of the rope. And the reason for this is that if I'm repelling, you know, and I'm looking up, and here's a very controlled environment, but in some environments in alpine or rock climbing environments where the rock is loose and scary, um, you may be more focused on the rope playing on that boulder that's kind of shaking over top of your head and the rope is crossing over it and you're wondering if that's going to come down. And you may lose your focus on the fact that you're coming close to the ends of your ropes. Remember, when you come close to the end of your rope, your rope is fully weighted and it's really stretched out like a big elastic band. And so, that's a lot of potential energy in reserve. It's, it's like you're holding an elastic band apart. And if your hand comes off the end of the rope, it would be like stretching an elastic band and letting go of one end. And it'd be like the old coyote. You never you ever see the old Bugs Bunny? You'd have about this much time to pull up the sign and go, yikes! And then come through your blade of ice and she'd all be over but the crying. So we don't want to get to that point. And that has happened a lot. It happened on the watchtower when this young girl that uh, worked up at Lake O'Hare Lodge and she was near the ends of her rope and she was trying to swing in, trying to swing in and kept slipping down and slipping down and her hand came off the end of the rope and the rope just instantly disappears because that elastic band all of a sudden like shoots together goes right out your blade device. So you really be careful there, okay? So that's why we put knots in the end of the rope. 
Chris, there's other cautions when we're done. We have to remember to take the knots out before we pull the rope. Now for me, it's kind of windy today. You can hear the wind blowing in the background. So I'm going to take the rope and I'm going to create some butterfly coils, right? So one side, two sides. We've covered this. This is the same as coiling a rope uh, butterfly coil style. Uh, if you look through the videos, you're going to find that. And I just keep going and keep going. And I pull each strand equally, okay? So then it's running through the focal point of my anchor nice and smoothly. There. So in this case, I guess both ends are the same. The rope changes colors here right at, the, right at the center. And I'm clipped in, have a look over, make sure I'm not going to throw the rope on anybody. Rope! Alright, so I've got knots in the end. I'm not going to wrap off the end. 